Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 191. On Now You Know. Brought to you as always by our wonderful Patreon patrons. Help support this show and get some exclusive perks while you're at it. And as Amazon Associates, we earn from qualifying purchases. The link is down below. And we're brought to you by EcoWare.us. Did you know that Bobby designs most of the shirts that are on EcoWare? Yes, I knew that. I, I work with them on it. Ah, I see. So you <laughs> might know that, but our, our viewers may not. And did you know that we just planted 500 trees, some in Australia and some in Africa? Cool. So that's because we plant a tree... With every order. And we carbon offset the manufacturing, the shipping, and the life cycle of every shirt. So all the products on EcoWare.us are carbon negative. And don't forget to send us your pictures of you wearing EcoWare products. All right, so let's start with the big story, which is Elon's tweets. Now, we always report Elon's tweets on the show, but this week he's been um, very controversial. A controversial, <laughs> to say the least. He's crazy. He's certifiably insane. Absolutely crazy. I can't believe he, I can't believe he's allowed to run a company. Well, let's go through his tweets and you can tell me what uh, you're upset about. So I just want to mention that Jesse and I are neither medical nor legal experts. Uh, so we're just going to be reading his tweets and trying to explain what we think he was talking about. We'll be talking more about our opinions about this on the Patreon bonus stories. All right. So his first tweet here is Silicon Valley has become sanctimonious valley. Too much the moral arbiter of the world. And Ronald said overtaking Hollywood. Elon said, which isn't easy. OK, but wait, I didn't. I didn't even hear about this tweet. Also, what does sanctimonious mean? Yeah, you know, like the arbiters of what's right and wrong in the world. You're still using a lot of big words there, arbiters. So basically, the, the, they're, the, they're the people who are in charge of what is considered. Yeah, the, like the moral uh, the moral direction of the country. Okay, yeah. I, I mean, this isn't, this isn't what I was talking about. Oh, okay. Well, maybe you're upset about this one. Elon said, give people their freedom back in, and then posted a link to an opinion piece from the Wall Street Journal. Yeah, I mean, this is a little bit more on track of what we're talking about here. Or maybe when he said, bravo, Texas. And this was in reference to the fact that Texas is reopening their state. He show, mm, I don't know. Well, loving Pope of Muscanity said, if the CFR is as low as the Santa Clara Stanford study, 0.12%, this one appears to have errors in data analysis and be biased on Facebook advertising, or even closer to Iceland, 0.7% for closed cases. Reopening carefully with proper social distancing would be the ethical thing. And Elon said, yes, reopen with care and appropriate protection, but don't put everyone under the de facto house arrest. Okay. I mean, this isn't really the tweet that uh, everyone's talking about. Phil LeBou from uh, CNBC said, Tesla CEO Elon Musk blasts the shelter in place orders to say that they cannot leave their house and they will be arrested if they do. This is fascist. This is not democratic. This is not freedom. Give people back their goddamn freedom. Elon Musk said, hell yeah. That was a quote from the uh, Q1 earnings report that yeah. we reported on last week. Yeah. I mean, is that the one that's getting you upset? Well, no, that's not that's not it either. Okay. I mean, people are upset about this one. There's lots of people upset about the, all, all of this stuff, but this isn't even the one that most people are that upset about. Okay, how about this one? Elon said, yes, reopen with care and appropriate protection, but don't put everyone under de facto house arrest. And Viv said, that's what Germany started doing this week, too. And Elon said, very sensible. So is that what you're upset about? Uh, No, that I mean, it, it's bad. He shouldn't be saying these things. Okay. He shouldn't be say he shouldn't have these opinions. Oh, no? No. Okay. No, uh, not at all. How about this one? So Kimball Musk, his brother, tweeted out, Colorado is also doing doing well. Slow and steady improvement. And our governor has ended the stay at home order. New York City has the subway, which is not just about being outside. That will drive massive contagion. New York City is being handled well by Cuomo and needs to continue to be a special case. And Elon said, bravo, governor of Colorado. Is that what's making you mad? Again, no, not well. Yes, but uh, people are upset about this. Uh, I don't know. OK, this one then. Uh, Elon tweeted out hospitals in California have been half empty this whole time. And he tweeted out a graph showing out the actual data of how 
busy they've been. Okay, well, yeah, you can find anything on the internet, but again, this isn't what I'm upset about. Well, that data is from the California Health and Human Services Department. Okay, whatever. I'm just, but this isn't even what we're, this isn't what everyone's upset about. Okay, so you're upset about this one then. This must be the one you're getting upset at. Elon said, I am selling almost all physical possessions, will own no house. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I'm not as upset about it, but it definitely shows that he's crazy. He said, uh, just one stipulation on the sale. I own Gene Wilder's old house it cannot be torn down or lose any of its soul and then elon said my girlfriend grimes is mad at me and when asked why he said freedom okay yeah it just shows goes to show how crazy he is um and then he did start tweeting out uh the lyrics to the national anthem i'm telling yeah he's crazy wow what a crazy kooky thing to be tweeting the modest rose said i'm shocked so many people don't seem to understand his meaning here the star spangled banner is the personification of what it means to be an american the land of the free the home of the brave does it still exist are you just going to let it fall it's a call to arms and elon said exactly are we still free are we still brave hell yeah so that's what you're upset about. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's crazy, clearly. But I mean, the the real reason why we're all upset at Elon. Oh, is this one. Yeah. Tesla this stock one. price is too high. IMO. Elon, that's your own company. Why should you do that? Oh, I lost so much money. This is a, uh, uh, you can't do that. Yeah. No, I mean, I would agree with you. The SEC had put regulations in place that said that he had to have all of his tweets checked if they were to talk about certain issues. And one of the issues was any information about the company's financial condition or guidance. And I kind of feel like if the CEO is talking about the price of the stock, that's guidance. And so you should have it checked first. Now, maybe he did have it checked first by a lawyer. Don't know. Uh, He did say it is his opinion. Um, And maybe he's talking about the stock price because, well, we have a question coming up later in the in the episode that might shed some light on this. Who knows? Okay, but clearly he's crazy because what? Why would any CEO ever say something like that? Okay, well, that wouldn't be the first time that he's talked about stuff like this. I mean, if we remember back in 2013 at a London event, he said the stock price that we have is more than we have any right to deserve. Okay, but that I mean, that was back in 2013 and it was like, oh, maybe it was overvalued back then. Well, if you remember in December of 2019, he tweeted, whoa. The stock price is so high, LOL. And that was the day it hit 420. Right. But that's because it's a 420 joke. This is different. He's just tweeting it out. It's not on something. I And you're right. I mean, it did bring the stock price down. Here's a chart of that day when he tweeted it out and the stock dropped, uh, you know, about 40, 50 points. It is reminiscent to me of back during the Model 3 ramp when he was super tired. And I got to say, a lot of these tweets come in late at night. Maybe he's not getting enough sleep. Maybe he needs someone to remind him that, like, maybe it's time to shut down the Twitter account at 11 o'clock and then not revisit it again till the next morning. Well, this could be something else entirely. What? With Elon doubling down on this whole freedom thing, it could be seen as that he just wants to get people back in his factory making products that he can make money. So, and, and you might be asking, well, so what? Of course he would want that. But he does personally have millions of dollars riding on this because basically if he can keep his company at above a hundred billion dollars valuation over a six month period, including at least 30 consecutive days, Elon would have the option to buy about 1.69 million shares at about $350 each. Um, right. That's part of his contract. And so he would have a huge incentive for, to keep the stock price high. So... All of this like freedom stuff makes it seem like he wants to keep the stock price high in order to make this giant stock options thing. So to show that he's a little bit more serious um, about the freedom thing as opposed to it just being about personal gains in terms of money, he would say something like "Uh, the stock is too high, in my opinion, to artificially lower the stock, thereby forgoing his payday in order to show how serious he was about his convictions about this particular thing. None of that sounds crazy to me. It just sounds like he has convictions. That's one way to read it. Now, I think the thing here, though, is that Elon does this tweet, and it's pretty out there in terms of normal CEO stuff. Sure. Um, 
And so it's it's newsworthy. So they're sitting in the newsroom, the you know, all the writers for the news organizations, and they're divvying up all the news stories that week. And so the assignment editor is like, okay, uh, we have uh, Elon tweeted about this thing. Uh, Dave, I'm going to give you that. Uh, and then Dave goes on his computer. And he's like, okay, I have to do some research. So he goes on, he reads the tweet about the, I think the stock price is too high. Then he starts reading some of Elon's other tweets. So Dave has not been following Elon's Twitter for the past three years, right? He doesn't know what Elon is usually doing on his Twitter account. So he sees the stock tweet and then he starts going through and he's like, this guy, he's he's lost his mind. He's, he's lost his marbles. This guy is crazy because these tweets don't make any sense. Now, for someone like me who's been watching Elon's Twitter account meticulously for the past three and a half years, not too much out of the ordinary other than the stock tweet, you know, that is a little bit out of the ordinary, but not out of character. So for people who are, you know, running around saying that he's crazy, it's a little overblown. I think we've been talking about this a lot. We got other stories to get to. So we'll talk about this more on our Patreon bonus stories. All right. So this is pretty big news. A lot of people talking about it. Lincoln won't use Rivian's skateboard. But wait, that was the whole reason that Ford acquired Rivian, wasn't it? Yeah, it's really interesting. Ford communicated on its employee website last week that a rapidly changing environment led the company to reconsider its plans with Rivian. It reads, we continue to review and adjust our business and product plans as all prudent businesses do. As we moved through the development cycle, we determined that it would be better to pivot from the Rivian skateboard platform and focus our development efforts on Lincoln's own fully electric vehicle. Meanwhile, Lincoln last week filed a trademark for something called eGlide. eGlide? So, like, it sounds like a lubricant. Uh, no, obviously, it's uh, the name of their next transportation uh, product. But, I mean, there there's already transportation products called eGlide, like this skateboard. <gasps> That's where they're, they're, instead of working with Rivian, they're going to work with eGlide, the skateboard manufacturer, because they don't want to use Rivian's skateboard. So, they're going to use the eGlide skateboard. This makes sense. Uh, no, it doesn't doesn't. In fact, wasn't the name of it going to be Quiet Flight? I think it's just basically they're rebranding. They're coming up with, you know, new names. I don't think Quiet Flight was quite right at the time. And I neither, I don't think Eglide <laughs> is quite it either. Um, but uh, Amy Mast, a Rivian spokesperson, said Ford and Lincoln continue to be great partners. And it's interesting to note that Rivian earlier this month announced that it's pushing back the release of its R1T electric pickup and its R1S SUV from late 2020 now to early 2021. Okay, wait. So Rivian is pushing back their thing. That makes sense. Everything's getting pushed back at the moment. But I mean, about Lincoln, isn't this going to affect the $500 million that Ford poured into Rivian? Here's what I think happened. Ford invested its $500 million in Rivian. That's probably been spent. They're going to be spending, you know, $11.5 billion on electrification coming up. And I think what Ford did was they spent their $500 million so that they could peek under Rivian's hood and get to see what's going on and how to make things. And then they've decided to make it themselves. I think this is so weird. I mean, I don't know if what is currently going on had anything to do with Lincoln or if they're like, oh, this is a good excuse to to get out of our thing, which we were planning on doing anyway. I was surprised to see that Ford doesn't have any brands left. Um, I, you know, I remembered Ford from being a kid. They had Mercury and all that. Now they only have Lincoln. So other than the Mach-E, I mean, this is pretty much it. Their foray into, uh, into electrics is their Ford F-150, and they've gotten rid of most of their sedans. Mm -hmm. So this is it. This is kind of like their last ditch thing. And I think they're thinking, why spend extra money on Rivian for this when we can probably do it ourselves? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's easy. I, I want to. I want to stress. Electric cars are difficult to perfect, but they're not too hard to get off the ground, especially especially when you're building them from the ground up. Yeah, it's kind of like Ford <laughs> spent five hundred million to get into the restaurant and to get back into the kitchen and to look in all the pots and to see how the recipes were, and then like, hmm, okay. We can buy our own potatoes yeah. and uh, do it ourselves. This is some cool news. Tesla's AP safety record has improved again. Oh, cool. So, I mean, this is a kind of a quarterly number that we look at every quarter. <laughs> and uh, so let's let's walk through it here. So Tesla said in the first quarter, we registered one accident for every 4.68 million miles driven in which drivers had autopilot engaged. For those driving without autopilot, but with our active safety features, we registered one accident for every 1.99 million miles driven. For those driving without autopilot and without our active safety features, we registered one accident for every 1.42 million miles driven. 
By comparison, NHTSA's most recent data shows that in the United States, there is an automobile crash every 479,000 miles. Okay, wait, so uh, there's a million miles and then there's... Oh, you know what? It's easier to visualize this with a good chart. So let's go oh. to hypercharts.co where they have an excellent Tesla safety chart. So check this out. Oh. That flat line along the bottom is basically doesn't change that much. That's NHTSA's data. So one accident for every 479,000 miles. The red line there at the top is when you're using autopilot. And that means that you're over nine times safer driving with autopilot on. Nine times safer? Yeah. So, okay. Nine wait. times less likely to even get into an accident. So let's just look at this red line here for a second. So uh, what happened last quarter? Q4 looked terrible. Well, if you remember, Q4 includes December, which is a very uh, dark and cold month in many in many states. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of crashes, especially because the beginning of winter, people have forgotten about winter um, and they've forgotten that ice makes things slippery. Mm -hmm. And so there's lots of car crashes. And this is a trend that we've seen throughout the years that Q4 is like the worst quarter for Tesla autopilot. And then it starts to pick back up from there. And uh, wow, look at the data. And I want to look, especially year over year, that's extraordinary growth mm -hmm. and increase in safety. I mean, I remember when we were talking about six times safer. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about nine times safer to be an autopilot. Yep. And that's not all. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at Tesla's fire data. A lot of people are like, electric cars catch on fire. Right. But I mean, there's all those news stories that you see, but right. every from month to month, maybe you see one or two stories about electric cars. But let's look at the actual data. From 2012 to 2019, there have been approximately one Tesla vehicle fire for every 175 million miles traveled. By comparison, data from the National Fire Protection Association and the US Department of Transportation shows that in the United States, there is a vehicle fire for every 19 million miles traveled in a regular ICE car. There's about nine times less fires in Teslas. And there's nine times more fires in non-electric cars. And why do you think that is? Uh, because there are explosions happening in those cars. Exactly. Constantly. Remember, remember what we just talked about on our conversion garage exactly. where we learned about the internal combustion engine. It's mm -hmm. just a bunch of explosions going on. And there's a fuel tank. And there's fuel lines. <laughs> and a hot exhaust system. Tesla Time News is sponsored by Cybertruck Owners Club. There you'll find a crowdsourced reservation tracker that you can update. Check out their website for Cybertruck news, discussions, and community for Cybertruck enthusiasts and future owners. So you remember the Q1 earnings call we reported on where Elon said that the Model S actually should have an EPA rated range of 400 miles, but only got 391 miles because the EPA range testers left a door open overnight with the key inside. Well, the EPA has refuted Elon's claim, telling The Verge, we can confirm that EPA tested the vehicle properly. The door was closed and we are happy to discuss any technical issues with Tesla as we do routinely with all automakers. So, uh, drama. Yeah, I mean, here's my take. Tesla knows everything that goes on with their vehicles. They've got a log of everything, doors closed, doors open, whatever. So it's easy for me to believe that the EPA did forget to do something. They thought the door was closed. Maybe the latch didn't click. And so the car stayed on. That's possible. And it's also possible that it's completely made up. But the, the good news is we're going to find out in a month or two when EPA reopens and we retest. Right. But I mean, right now it's unknowable. It's one of those like he said, she said. Right. And so... It, and it doesn't matter. This is a 400-ish right. mile range car. Nine miles is never going to make a difference. Like on a Nissan Leaf, with a, when you have a range of you know 70 miles in the winter, nine miles is huge. You're like, nine miles? I just lost nine miles. You'd be freaked out. Right. With 400-ish miles, nine miles is like, oh, is that nine miles? I didn't even notice. So Jesse. Mm-hmm. Want to have a job in Shanghai? But I work from home. What? what do well, you no, you'd have to work there. This is Giga Shanghai, and they're looking for battery production supervisors. That means they're making batteries in Shanghai. Whoa. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So, I mean, before, we weren't quite sure whether Tesla was going to be buying all of their batteries from, like, Cat-L um, in China or if they were going to be getting them from somewhere else. Now it appears like they might actually be building batteries in China, which... Uh, yeah, we just, we didn't have any idea about. This gives us some hints as to what they're working on in that new factory of theirs. And speaking of China, last week we told you how China was nudging Tesla to reduce the price of the Model 3 made in China by lowering subsidy availability to cars priced under $42,400. And basically because of this, as we 
conjectured last week, uh, Tesla lowered the price of the Model 3 in China to start at just $41,300, which, after government incentives, puts it at $38,450. That's awesome. Now, in March, Tesla's sales represented 25% of China's EV sales. Wow. So they move into a country, and right off the bat, they've got a huge market share. I don't think that there's any coincidence. Now, remember that Tesla doesn't pay for advertising. Mm -hmm. And uh, in China, we saw last week that influencer Vaya, who is a big Chinese influencer, she showed off the Tesla Model 3 to over 4 million of her fans last week. And according to Bloomberg, almost 4 million viewers watched the hour-long show on the Taobu shopping platform on Tuesday afternoon, seeing live streamer and influencer Vaya demonstrate Tesla features from the music player to the air conditioning, even climbing into the cargo space of the Model S sedan to show how spacious it is. So, but but is weren't they paying to get this? No, this is uh, an influencer just wanting to show off how cool the car is. But whoever is in charge of marketing in China is doing a pretty bang up job because it's stuff like this, um, along with a lot of other really smart moves that Tesla's made in China, that is giving it that 25% of EV sales in the country. Now you remember that in the UK, there is a type of car called the shooting brake, which is very popular. It's kind of like in the US, we used to have the station wagon. Well, I guess we kind of outgrew the station wagon, but the UK just keeps loving this, this form of car called the shooting brake. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's evolved since then, right? I mean, they they don't look like the station wagons of old, but uh, yeah, it's not a very popular American style. But it is popular in the UK, and there is a Tesla you can get that is in the shooting brake style. Cool. So it's, wait, I've never heard of this one. Uh, well, there's only one of them. R one model? Uh, one at all, one unit. Oh, one actual car. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, it, okay. it costs 185,555 pounds. That's excluding the 21% value added tax. If you have to pay that tax, that'd be 224,000 euro. Um, no, it's a no go for But you. wait, wait. So, so this must be they they made it really fantastic. I'm I'm just trying to I'm just trying to ascertain what makes it worth that much. Like well, did it's they a, It's a 2013 Model S with the fascia update. Um, and yeah, it's been converted into this shooting brake style. So it's a used car. It's a used car. That's a very expensive used car. Yes, now, it is. Now, I guess this is for the, it's for the man who has everything kind of thing. I deal. guess. It's like, sure. I have the only Tesla Model S uh, shooting brake in the world. It's pro you know who's probably going to buy it? Jeremy Clarkson. Because he loves Tesla so much. <laughs> I don't think I so. I've got the coolest only, only one in the whole world. So you might remember last Thursday on our in-depth, our early in-depth. How, how cool was that? Uh, about the earnings call, uh, we mentioned very briefly about the two-piece casting for the Model Y. Oh, that's right. That's the rear casting that instead of 70 parts is now just two. Yeah. And Elon said, for Model Y, we introduced a revolutionary two-piece casting. We are going to be making a single-piece casting later this year, meaning like essentially the rear third of the body is cast as a single piece. There is no casting of the size and complexity that has ever been done before. In fact, there isn't even anything that is on par with the two-piece casting for the Model Y. So we're really pushing the envelope on vehicle structural engineering and manufacturing. I'm very excited about this approach as it allows us to reduce the weight of the cars and improve NVH, which is noise, vibration, and harshness. It's better in every way, essentially. So this will probably go down in the history books as like the Model Y was the first car to show the viability. This casting, I think, is going to be big news. I, I think yeah. that especially when they get the single piece casting in, um, it's going to turn a lot of heads. It's already turned heads uh, from like Sandy Monroe. Mm -hmm. He's extraordinarily happy with it. And again, most people aren't designing things for manufacturing. So you might be saying like, I don't understand what what's the big deal about this. You're combining a lot of parts, 70 parts down to two pieces. Well, and, and I just want to stop you there. So reducing parts would normally be a no go for the major auto manufacturers. Why? Because they want to sell you parts later to fix your car. That's, that's how they make a lot of money. Tesla doesn't want to ever sell you parts if they can help it. So that's the approach here is like, let's simplify. Let's make this car last as long as possible. Right. And this, again, when we're talking about robo taxis, if they're able to do this on the real third of the Model Y. It's pretty easy to look a few more steps down the road and be thinking like, okay, 
So they're able to do it for the rear third of the Model Y. What prevents them from doing this for the rest of the car or exactly. for lots of other pieces or for a car specifically designed to be a robo taxi? Because for a robo taxi, it's not about like the comforts of your your own car. It's more like how many miles can we get out of this thing? Right. And how little maintenance can we do to this car while it's on the road transporting people all the time? So this is exciting. Honda Canada just appointed their new CEO, Jean-Marc Leclerc. Oh, that's exciting. So, yeah. oh, he must be bringing some fresh ideas and some fresh blood to this uh, company. He's going to turn it around. Oh, this is great. In an interview with the Windsor Star, he said the Canadian government is not going to achieve greenhouse gas reductions with EVs simply because of cost and forcing manufacturers to sell them at a loss. Uh, what? Nobody wants to talk about how much this costs and what people are prepared to pay. They're just forging forward, thinking we have all the solutions, and we don't. There's a political agenda, Leclerc said. It's easy for people to understand zero emission vehicles as a political statement. He goes on to say, don't impose a technology, don't impose EVs. That's a big topic in imposing zero emission vehicles. If they, the US, go into a different direction or we decide to be aggressive here in Canada relative to greenhouse gas reductions, what you'll have is an imbalance in terms of products being developed and produced. They're always developed and produced for the larger market. We're a little concerned about that. Let me just try and... Um translate for him here basically he's saying uh we don't want canada to mandate evs in canada okay. uh because we would be selling those cars at a loss that's that was his first little statement there okay then when he says uh they're just forging forward thinking we have all the, all the solutions and we don't that's basically just admitting that they don't have any evs Oh, that's true. Honda doesn't really have any. And why don't they have any battery electric vehicles? It's because they've been pouring all their money into hydrogen research for their hydrogen fuel cell cars. Which they just which abandoned. Which they just abandoned, uh, which means that they are now even further behind than many of the other automakers. And so then he sums it up by basically saying, like, we really hope that Canada doesn't mandate this because I don't think it's going to work because we can't do it. Uh, when he says that, you know, we don't have the solutions... He's he's not wrong, but he just means that Honda doesn't have the solutions. Right. Tesla has the solutions. There are other companies who are probably going to be able to spool up their EV production and take advantage. This is what we've been saying for the past four years is that Honda has been falling further and further behind and they keep hoping that hydrogen will be the way out. It isn't. And so now they're really screwed. And to top it all off, they hired this dope to be their CEO for Canada. Uh, which isn't helping anything. I think he's just a mouthpiece to make sure that they keep getting their message across that uh, they're behind. There's some good news here, though. Mm -hmm. According to the IEA, which is the International Energy Agency, there will be a global annual decline in CO2 emissions of almost 8% due to the worldwide double plus bad cold and energy demand will fall 6%. They said the equivalent of losing the entire energy demand of India, the world's third largest energy consumer. Wow. So that's pretty significant. But 8% of CO2 emissions, that's not amazing. But Faith Burrell, the IEA executive director, said this is a historic shock to the entire energy world. Amid today's unparalleled health and economic crisis, the plunge in demand for nearly all major fuels is staggering, especially for coal, oil, and gas. Only renewables are holding up during the previously unheard of slump in electricity use. It is still too early to determine the long-term impacts, but the energy industry that emerges from this crisis will be significantly different from the one that came before. Whoa. And this is the IEA, which is normally very conservative. Right. So the thing to keep in mind here is that when you produce less energy and you have a lot of infrastructure to produce more energy, uh, you have to either produce the energy cheaper because the market has less of a demand um, or you have to roll back. I mean, you obviously have to roll back supply. And what is the cheapest way to produce electricity? It's to already have a solar or wind farm already running because it costs zero dollars every day. Right. You don't have to pretty much do anything. It's just sitting there. Yes, you have to do some maintenance from time to time. But at the drop of a hat, when energy demand goes down, you're still producing power for nothing. Right. And compare that to any other form of fossil fuel generation where you need to have all sorts of staff who are constantly operating a fire that has to be burning and tons and tons of moving parts, it's a lot different. 
And you also have to buy the coal and extract it out of the ground and ship it and move it and do all sorts of stuff to it. Solar panels, again, just sitting there. So here's some more good news. On the Q1 earnings letter, Tesla said, we have also seen an increase in cross-selling within the entire energy business as more than 40% of our residential solar customers opt for at least one Powerwall. In Q1, we installed our 100,000th Powerwall. And if you do the math, uh, a Powerwall costs about $5,000. So 5,000 times 100,000, that's half a billion dollars in revenue from the Powerwall division. That's pretty good. And yeah, I mean, Tesla Energy is one of those things that just hardly ever gets talked about. The stock analysts are always talking about the cars. It's like the only thing they care about. They'll they'll just, just whiff right over it every single time. And I mean, just wait till battery day, which should be happening in the third week in May. We're probably going to be hearing a lot more about how much bigger Tesla Energy is going to become as part of the company. Right. I mean, Elon's already said that Tesla Energy could dwarf Tesla, the car company. It makes total sense. Now, as we reported on last week's Q1 Tesla earnings call in depth, Tesla has announced that they will be delaying the introduction of the Tesla semi truck until 2021. Now, you may know that Zach and I are actually early reservation holders on the list for the semi-truck. We put down our deposit on the night of the unveiling, but Tesla said in the Q1 letter, we are shifting our first Tesla semi deliveries to 2021. We're a bit bummed because we were going to get the semi truck and we mm -hmm. thought it would be this year and we had plans to you know, drive it all over the US, but I mean, it will happen. It's right. important to keep in mind. Yeah. It's just been pushed off. It's just delayed gratification. And, and I just want to remind everybody a little bit about it. The long range truck is going to be priced at 180000 That's the last time we heard. And it should have a range of 500 to 600 miles. That's fully loaded, a fully loaded semi tractor trailer truck. And the shorter range truck should have a price of $150,000. And as Elon told us during the semi truck unveiling, the semi should have a $1.26 per mile cost to operate, which is cheaper than all other diesel trucks. It's one of those things. They're kicking the can down the road. Obviously, you know, all companies are kicking their their plans down the road a little bit. Um, I'm not that surprised. I'm not that even disappointed or upset. Like, and and we're one of the, we're one of the few people who has every right to be upset. It's like, yeah, we knew that it was coming, but there's no real rush for it at this point. As we learned also from the Q1 earnings report, this was the first full quarter of FCA, which is Fiat Chrysler, paying Tesla for clean auto credits. To the tune of $350 million. And FCA will be paying a reported $2 billion over the next couple of years to stay in compliance with Europe's strict clean air regulations. As we can see here from the report from the International Council on Clean Transportation, Tesla FCA <laughs> uh, tops the list in terms of uh, clean vehicles. It was the only way really for FCA to even stay afloat in Europe because they don't really produce any electric cars. And they produce pretty inefficient cars. And the report says year to date, the 2020 market share of electric vehicles was 7%, more than twice as high as during the same time period in 2019. FCA Tesla was the manufacturer pool with the highest share of electric vehicles, 39%. This is the result of a strong uptake of Tesla battery electric vehicle sales with a tenfold increase in deliveries in markets such as the UK, while at the same time, sales of the Fiat brand combustion engine vehicles were cut in half compared to the previous month. Uh, some people might be a little bit upset that Tesla is working with FCA to um, essentially like save their skins from this regulation. Um, but it's important to realize that that is kind of what the regulation was put there in place for because what Fiat Chrysler is essentially doing is digging their own grave. Um, and uh, they're financing the shovels to do it. Because when they go out of business, we're going to be looking back at like, wow, so they lost $350 million a quarter and they paid Tesla $2 billion to basically build a factory to put them out of business. So another EV delayed. GM has delayed the reveal of the Hummer EV, which had been scheduled for May 20th at the retrofitted GM Detroit Hamtrank plant. No word on the new date yet. But we did get a pretty nifty video. Oh, you're talking about the video that shows it driving through a forest? Yeah. Well, okay, well, I just want to point out, if you read the fine print, that's not really the truck. That's a CGI truck. So, okay, that's what it looks like from an angle that you'll rarely ever see it from. But I couldn't make anything out. It was so far away. It's roughly rectangular-ish shaped. Huh? Okay. Huh? Well, we do know some things about the truck. We know that it's going to have options for up to 1,000 horsepower, 11,500 pound-feet of torque, and 0 to 60 in 3 seconds with an 800-volt battery system. 
No word yet on the price, the range, or the volume, but GM's communication manager said range will absolutely be competitive with other electric trucks that have been announced. Okay. Okay. So we just have to wait even longer to see it. And again, eh, that's just the name of the game at this point, unfortunately. Initial availability should be fall of 2021. All right, Jesse, so you know that there's been a bunch of places bidding on getting the Cybertruck Gigafactory site. Mm -hmm. There's a new one joining the gang here. Okay. Wichita. You need a centrally located site, and the greater Wichita region has the best. Everything a Cybertruck Gigafactory needs. 800 acres and access to two Class 1 railroads. 800 acres? That's right, 800 acres. We'll also throw in the number one manufacturing skilled workforce in the nation. Whoa, thanks, Wichita. And that's not all. We have great ice cream, cute dogs, and a passion for space. This guy loves us, and we think you will too. Incentives for Gigafactory included, some assembly required. It's funny how all these different places have to appeal to Elon Musk first and foremost, right. um, and then basically talk about all of the actual benefits secondly. Right. So here are the benefits. Uh, if you want to go to Wichita, Elon, there's an 800-acre site with your name on it, mm -hmm. access to two Class 1 railways. There's quick access to the I-35 with two interchanges less than two miles from the site location, electric substation available on the site, and adjacent 8,400-acre lake offering high-capacity water with low rates. Personally, it doesn't sound like enough of an incentive, but... Maybe it's yeah, a good I mean, site. I think that there's one reason why he wouldn't choose Wichita. Why? It's a little it's a little out there, I'll be honest. Um so remember a little while ago Jack White performed at the Fremont factory for all of the factory workers. Oh, Jack White of the the, of white, the stripes. white stripes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um well he has that song, Seven Nation Army. Uh where in it he says, I'm, I'm going, going to Wichita. Wichita. Right? Okay. Well, Funny, funny thing is he's never been to Wichita and because he is Jack White, he, I think, as far as my understanding goes, he will never go to Wichita because it's way more rock and roll to say that he is going to Wichita and then never actually going. What does that have to do with this? Well, if Elon wants him to perform another concert, that that plan is going to fall through because he's not going to be able to do it in Wichita. Okay, so good. good to get your analysis there. I'm just, that is my expert opinion right there. Thank you very much, Bob. All right, it's time for our video contributor story, which is sponsored by GoPuck. GoPuck is a really innovative uh, battery bank. We use it all the time when we're shooting. We're actually able to connect it up to our cameras so that way we don't have to keep replacing the batteries in the camera all the time. Um, really small, fits right in your pocket. So if you want a GoPuck for yourself, you can find the referral link and discount code in the show notes down below. And this week, we've got our buddy Bjorn, who's showing us an electric garbage truck and a bus charging in Norway. So here we are in Oslo. Where is our, uh, this is where we charge our uh, electrical buses. From what I can see, we have about 20 uh, chargers here. And, uh, it seems like they're just uh, lifting that thing up to charge them. So, small update here from, uh, from Norway. Have a nice day and stay safe. Now, I know that was a short video you saw there, but it's I, I think it's important because it's a very mundane thing, a mm. garbage truck. But do you realize how silent it was going up that hill and how there was no black exhaust pouring out of it? It's mm -hmm. just wonderful to see. Thank you, Bjorn. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories, and we're going to be covering a lot of what we talked about in the beginning of the show. So if you want to head over to Patreon and support us for as little as a buck a month, you can hear what we think about what Elon's been tweeting about. All right, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories. It's time for our shout outs. These are the special folks that support us for $5 or more a month and make this show possible. Who do we have, Jesse? We have Steve Kenny, Dan S. Brown, Regine Audette, Sean Kelly, Rachel Bish, Frank Gomes, Gary Tonmaker, Sam Ross, Pascal Abesolo, and TJ Bennett Builders, Perth, Australia. Thank you, guys. 
And I want to just do a quick plug for our live stream that we're going to be doing for our Patreons on Saturday, May 9th at 2 p.m. If you're our Patreons at uh, $8 and above, you can hang out with us and ask some questions. It'll be a Zoom meeting. Now that we're all good at <laughs> Zoom meetings. All right, it's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. And these are not the ones we did before. These are a little less uh, flamboyant, let's say. Yes. Uh, Fidele Armstrong said, Elon, when will Starlink be fully deployed? Africa needs it for some very urgent special project. And Elon said, Hopefully start serving Africa early next year. That's exciting. Yeah. Bringing, bringing internet to an entire continent. And then Viv said, legendary Hubble Space Telescope just turned 30 a few days ago and has provided us with some of the most stunning images ever taken. Starship is likely able to launch telescopes with an even bigger mirror than the upcoming James Webb Space Telescope, which is pretty damn exciting. And Elon said, Starship will be able to launch telescopes over three times the diameter of Hubble. And as Tom from our newsroom has pointed out, it will probably be at a third of the price. Wow. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Community Mail Time. So we have our friend Darren in Orlando who is doing this interesting thing called the Most Epic Supercharge Challenge. And uh, for those of you who are worried, don't worry, he recorded this last year. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Darren. I'm Lady. So we all know about internet challenges. There's planking, there was the ice bucket challenge, and we wanted today to create a challenge of our own. We're here in our Tesla, we're in Orlando, and we know that one of the biggest concerns about uh, supercharging or about driving electric vehicles uh, in general is range anxiety. Well, one of the things that I love so much about driving a Tesla is that we have a massive uh, supercharging network. So yes, it does take about 20 or 30 minutes to supercharge, but what's so amazing is that unlike pumping gas, we can connect it, lock the car, and walk away. So we wanted to create a challenge to have people do the most epic thing they possibly can while they supercharge so um we happen to be in orlando and uh so for today's uh epic supercharge challenge we're going to try to ride the largest swing ride in the world and the mission is to be back at the car before we're done uh supercharging because we don't want to be uh taking up a spot uh unnecessarily so here we go Okay, so we're still on, but it's not spinning quite as fast. I think it's almost over. So we just got off this epic ride. Still supercharging. Looks like we have uh, 10 minutes left. And we're all set. So why was he on a swing? Well, he was in a bit of a rush. He was supercharging. He wanted to figure out the most epic thing he could do while he was supercharging. <laughs> I think Orlando awesome. is one of the few places where you could do something that epic maybe las vegas too i don't know probably so our patron steve was chatting with us the other day about full self-driving and about how he was concerned that full self-driving was never going to be able to handle intersections because he doesn't see cars crossing intersections on his driving visualization interesting to note that we are now somewhat comfortable with the new intersection feature to be able to see and respond to stop signs and stop lights and that a couple weeks ago it did not have this capability and sure. uh, even further back a lot of people didn't know if this was going to be even possible. Mm -hmm. um, and now it seems that the hard part is going to be crossing the intersection safely. But I want to point out here is that it really shows the strength of Tesla's visualization, both in building confidence for drivers to actually use autopilot, but also to display the limitations of autopilot. So you're saying that because Steve can see what the car can see, he feels more comfortable as he approaches an intersection. But now he's worried that he doesn't see cars crossing the intersection. So he's, so he's like, I don't think my car sees that. Right. And this has been an evolving process. The driving visualization has improved significantly over time. I mean, things like different vehicle types, stop signs and stoplights, uh, trash barrels, traffic cones, road markings, pedestrians and bikes, all these things weren't originally in the display. Mm. Um, and they have been added and updated as time goes on, which gives us more confidence in those things because we're actually able to see them. And that's the really cool thing. It allows you to monitor this instinctively rather than having to trust it blindly. Like oh, an I autopilot see. light doesn't just light up mm -hmm. on your dashboard and it's like, you are now an autopilot. Um, you actually get to see what's going on. So if it's looking a little wonky, you might go, oh, something wrong. And 
after using it for a while, you kind of can tell what it can see and what it can't. Right. So that way you're not going to be like, I bet it knows what a camel looks like and will stop for it. So, you'll, you'll take over. So it's almost like when your 16-year-old is driving the car and you're like, did you see that? Did you see that? But now you know like, oh, you saw that. It, it's as if you – I mean that's – driving with a 16-year-old is scary because you don't know at what level right. they are going to be able to drive. If you could see in their head and you could understand where that person was seeing uh, you know, dangerous mm -hmm. things or uh, how it was looking at an intersection and if it saw cars crossing an intersection, that would give, build you a little bit more confidence. Obviously, we don't have that when you're looking at, you know, looking at a person driving. But when we're looking at a computer driving, Tesla is really ahead in this regard because – they're the only company that actually shows the driver the driving visualization of their self-driving car because Tesla is one of the only cars that can do some of this stuff. All right, it's time for our on-air question of the week. And Lance Pickup said, what do you think about this theory? Elon's Tesla stock price is too high, in my opinion, tweet. Is not about Tesla's market cap, but just the stock price. Is Elon sending a secret encoded message to the faithful that he is considering a stock split in the near future, giving us an opportunity to buy a bunch of shares now at a bargain before a stock split is announced as it pushes share prices up? Then after the split, the stock price will, of course, be a fraction of what it is today. Okay, so a couple questions here. Uh, market cap. That is the stock price times the number of shares that there are in existence. Mm -hmm. That gives you the valuation of the company. And then a stock split is where you basically say, okay, you have one share. We're splitting the stocks. Now you have two shares, but they're worth half the value. Right. So what Lance is asking here is if when Elon says the stock price is too high, he literally means the stock price, meaning that they could split the stock, lowering the price, um, now, that could lead to some movement in the stock like he mentions there, but it would also mean that a lot of people could approach the stock a little bit easier. You no longer have to invest $700 in order to buy one share right. of the company. Um, you could invest $700 and get maybe two or four shares of right. the company, which means that you could spend even less money to get smaller shares. And now, why is that important? Because right now, you can do fractional ownership of shares. It's with, just that you can't vote. Your share. Oh, okay. You have to have at least one share to vote. So this would allow more shareholders to vote is, is one possible one, way to look at it. One possible to look at it. Also, when you do a stock split, you do see the stock price then start going back up again. So yeah, that could be it, Lance. I mean, that could be Elon's crafty way of doing it. Now, if that were true, don't you think the SEC would have something to say about it? Maybe. I mean, yes, as we talked about on the show, there's certain instances that he's supposed to check with his legal counsel before he tweets things out. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Maybe that's a legal thing for him to talk about. I don't know. But uh, it was an interesting point, Lance. All right. It's time for the results of our Patreon poll. And we asked, has your car ever been dinged? We're trying to figure out how beneficial a stainless steel exoskeleton like the Cybertrucks would be. And... Yes, the overwhelming number of people said, yes, I've had multiple dings and dents over the years. Only 27 people said, no, I've never even had a small ding on any of my cars. Interesting. So it shows that uh, this is going to pay off. <laughs> the Cybertruck is a, a good uh, idea. Yeah. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews, and these are sponsored by our friends at EvanX, the Tesla community's accessory store. If you're looking for awesome accessories for your Tesla, then check out EvanX and use our discount code, now you know, all lowercase. It'll save you 10% on purchases over $100. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Oliver in beautiful Metter, Georgia, and I'm at the new V3 Supercharger. So as you can see, we have five stalls uh, on this side. And there's a Model S over there, charging. And there's another piece. As you can see, there's two additional EV chargers. Overall, uh, I mean, this supercharger is pretty convenient. And lots of restaurants, only one bathroom at the Parkers. But uh, I would give this supercharger an 8 out of 10. Now you know. Hey Zach and Jesse, uh, we got uh, the Niagara Falls Supercharger here in Ontario. Uh, fresh, freshly put in. Uh, 11 stall, 250 kilowatt hours. Um, lots of stalls, as you can see. Even a couple over there. 
uh, and there's lots to do. You gotta switch to LA to get something to eat. Um, food basics to get some groceries. And it is overall a pretty good location. Canadian Tire as well. Um, just giving a quick charge right now. And yeah, now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse. I'm here in Alexandria, Minnesota in the brand new V3 Supercharger Station. Uh, overall, a very good area. Uh, there's a Target right there. Uh, also, there are a couple hotels this way. And if you need some coffee, there is a Starbucks right here. Anyway, uh, before anybody starts asking, I am in the Essential food and agricultural business, so I gotta service my customers, and there's nothing better to drive around than my Model 3. Anyway, I'm here in the V3 Supercharging Alexandria, currently pulling 180 kilowatts. Not bad, so I'll give this a seven out of 10, because it's a V3, and there's a target right here. So now you know. Now, we're running out of supercharger reviews, Jesse. Do you know why? because people aren't sending in supercharger reviews. Well, yeah, because people aren't driving. So here's my suggestion. You need to get out of the house anyway, right? Right. Drive around in your Tesla, do whatever you want to do, look at nature or whatever, stop at a supercharger, wash it off, wash your hands, charge your car, hop back in the car, Practice wash your social hands, distancing, all, all that, 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 yeah. And, but while you're out of the car, take out your phone, shoot a supercharger review. We need them on the show. All right, it's time for new superchargers. What do we got in the world? We have one. It, it is. It is. But here's the cool part. Number 48 in Texas. Wow. One. St I mean, it's a big state, but 48 supercharger locations. Number 812 in the USA and number 1,854 in the world. It is the eight stall, 150 kilowatt supercharger in Selma, Texas. Now, do you remember, Jesse, when we drove our Model X across country in 2016? We looked it up today. There was 265 superchargers in North America at the time. In all of North America. Right. Now there's over 900 in North. So it means three times more superchargers. Yeah. It's amazing. It's crazy. If you haven't looked at the map recently, I highly suggest you do that because it's awesome. All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway, and we're going to be giving away a Poster Envy poster this week. Oh, cool. Yeah. So to get into our big barrel of fun, you uh, just join us over at Patreon on our Now You Know channel, and uh, the more you support us, the more times we put your name into the barrel. Who's our winner this week? Our winner. Oh, and I guess I should hold up the poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our oh. winner is Dan S. Brown. Congratulations, Dan. You have won this poster. You're going to Mars. We're going to... <laughs> it's that's not a ticket that's just a poster it's a golden ticket so uh we'll be sending that to you dan thank you so much for supporting us and uh hey you've made it to the end of the show congratulations um i just wanna i just wanna mention what that, what, what are you gonna uh, mention we're racing a car up a mountain pretty soon and you could get your name on that car yes except we sold out there's no, no more spots to get your name Dang on the car it. Oh, well. Well, you can get a cool shirt if you want. Yeah. You can head over to Electric Performance, get a cool shirt. Maybe we're, we're, we're talking. We're talking to Blake. We're talking to Blake. We're trying to find more room Pleading, on the car. Please, find some more room on the car. He's like, well, there's more weight. <laughs> All these stickers are slowing me down. Um, so, you know, keep your eyes, keep your and, eyes appealed. And there's more big news coming up on that channel. So keep going over there, checking out the new, the new news. Uh, and also I wanted to mention too, if you're interested in getting a scooter, we did a review of uh, Big Batteries Lime Scooters. They got a whole bunch of Lime Scooters. So these are ES4s yeah, the from Se Segway. Yep, they're really nice scooters. They don't fold, but he's uh, over Big Battery. Eric is giving a really cool deal. And then he's giving an even better deal if you use our referral code. And a lot of people have been doing it. It's a it's, huge discount. It's a huge discount. It's like 40% so off. We'll, we'll put a link to the, the video up here if you want to check it out. Because, I mean, it's not for everyone. We're, we tell you kind of like who we think the best people for this deal would be. But um, if you're looking for a scooter with a good range, like this could be a really good deal. Mm -hmm. And we want to get as many people into e-mobility as we can. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. Thank you for hanging out with us. Thank you for being our uh, subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, why aren't you a subscriber? Right. It doesn't cost any money. I think the the problem with the word is the word subscribe. It sounds like if I click that button, I'm going to have to give some money. It's, it's free. It's free. It's free. But what it does is an it, account. it helps us because then more, more subscribers means that we have more clout. And with more clout, right. we it, can do more things. And it, well, it helps the videos get shared around and for more people to learn about Tesla and electric cars and 
solar panels and renewable energy. Because that's the goal here, people. We want the whole world with solar panels and EVs and wind. That's what we want. It's going to be... That's our master plan. It could be be awesome. So... uh, Help spread the word. Oh, also hit the like button. Yes. That also helps. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, do that. And do that to all of our videos. And go join our Patreon. Help support us because, you know... Uh, YouTube is not the same as it used to be. They're really, they're like, let's see how little we can give them. Right. You used to be able to have a YouTube channel with like 300 subscribers. Right. You know, now <laughs> you need 3 million in order to basically support yourself. Um, and we can't do it without our Patreon supporters. Uh, but they're helping us do some really awesome stuff that's coming up. That we can't wait to tell you about, but we can't tell you about it now. Although we did tell our patrons over on the Patreon bonus stories. So head over to Patreon. Support us for just a buck a month. We'll see you next week. Now you know. know.